welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. In this series, I cover topics related to developer tools. These tools help developers get the job done with higher quality and convenience. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS and that's fine. Just copy the contents to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all of my source code in a directory called SRC. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL and finally hit enter. And now to the show. Hey everybody, this episode will cover tunneling tools. These are useful for a couple of reasons. First, they can make it easy for others to try out your code through a firewall. And second, when you're developing against these services um, that use webhooks, then they're handy in that case too. So as you probably already realize, without pushing your application to an internet accessible server, you can't really share your running project with another person outside of your network. Of course, if you're pretty serious about your project, you probably do have that or a CI CD pipeline uh, that will take care of a lot of that for you. Um, however, sometimes you're not quite there or your project isn't, uh, you know, maybe big enough for all that uh, extra, extra work. So you need something quick and dirty or, or don't even want to pay for a cloud service. So in that case, you can use ngrok or local tunnel uh, to help you out. The other main reason for using one of these tools is when you're developing an application against a service that uses webhooks. If you're not familiar with webhooks, these are mechanisms in cloud services that will send data to a predefined URL, so your app, based on some action on the cloud service. So for example, when you're building a chatbot, your app is the bot and is a member of the service. And let's say someone sends your bot a message. Your bot needs to react to events in the room, but your bot actually doesn't live on that cloud service. So there isn't really an inherent way for it to know that something just arrived. Uh, so that's why these services will have webhooks. And so webhooks will fire when the right event happens and the message is sent by the platform to your app. When you get the message, your application can process it and send back another message or do whatever it's supposed to do on the back end. So let's take a look at a simple example using ngrok. First of all, you have to install ngrok. You can do that from their website, you know, download it and install it, or using a package manager like Homebrew uh, on the Mac. For local tunnel, the same applies, uh, but you install via the node package manager. I'm on a Mac and I have a homebrew, so I'll type brew cask install ngrok. And brew cask installs binaries um, as opposed to just a regular brew install. To demo this in action, let's take a look at the example app. Uh, it's located in the test troubleshooting slash tunnel directory. In the app, I'm using the Python micro framework called Flask to do all of the HTTP server heavy lifting for me. I've defined two routes. One, uh, one is the root path, and it just returns with a simple JSON message of got it. The second route requires you to post to it, like a webhook would, and responds with a small JSON formatted message as well. A very important thing is on the line that starts with app.run. Uh, it defines the port that the server uh, will be listening to, and so that's port 5000 in this case. Okay, here's the demo. What I'm going to do is uh, run my app, and then in a separate window, I'll run ngrok. You can see that ngrok is telling me some information about a URL that is pointing to localhost colon 5000. That URL is generated by the ngrok service. Uh, similar kind of output you'd get from local tunnel. So let's try out those endpoints. Uh, I'm gonna open up trusty old Postman and uh, we can see what we get. 
Okay, I'm going to put the external URL in Postman's uh, input box, and we'll just do a simple get. All right, so that's great. We got the expected message. And now let's try the other method, which is a post. Um, and so we just need to add slash message at the end to get to the right route. And we'll change this to um, post. Okay. So you can see that the external URL is routing, uh, you know, through the internet basically and back to my, my workstation uh, running the uh, instance of my app. And so that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, whether you use ngrok or local tunnel, uh, the concepts are pretty much identical. And uh, hopefully this will help you uh, when you're developing your projects. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions via Twitter at A Roach. Also, follow DevNet on Twitter at Cisco DevNet to keep up with our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.